Did you guys see this sap came out on uh, Netflix? I was like gonna make a joke about it, but then I was like, I don't want to screenshot Netflix and then post it. And some people are going to be like, what the heck is this? And then some people that like watched me play Isaac eight years ago and still follow me on Twitter for some reason are like, oh, this like this uh, stand up special was actually really good. And I'm like, that's not why I tweeted it. Anyway, go see. It just came out. Sap. Sap just came out on Netflix. Anyway, it's actually good. Ha ha. What did I just say? I'm just joking. Anyway. Um, okay, so we're back with the dolls. I just wish they tapped me for the... for. I could have at least done a cameo in Sap on Netflix. Instead, it's just somebody up on stage telling jokes, which is a career that I do not respect. I do not respect. Some of us are down here doing real work, keeping the wheels of society moving. Four billion dollars. It's a pretty reasonable amount of, uh, of trade. It's, it's more than Wallace and Fatuna, at least. This to me, okay, let me just tell you, what do I see? I see gold. I see a relatively low amount of exports relative to, you know, like an OPEC nation, but they do export some petroleum. I see nuts, and I'm thinking that, you know, nuts and gold definitely are things that exist in Africa. $4.07 billion. This could be something like Uganda. Okay, it is north of Uganda. It could be the Central African Republic. We're very close already, though. <laughs> it's north, okay. It could be Sudan. I'm crazy. I got it all. Dude, I'm insane at Tradel today. Well done. We, we got it. It's in three. It's Sudan. Well, I don't know. I, I expected that we would have to guess a little longer. I got it first try. <laughs> Honestly, good for you. I don't know. Like, what do you want me to say? There's a little bit of luck involved, okay, in Tradle. Like, as, just as easily as I said Uganda, I could have said uh, Kenya. I could have said, uh, I could have said Ethiopia or something like that. Hey, you, you respect it, okay? When I get it in three, it's different than when you get it in three. Now, if you get global in one, that's all skill. Algeria. This would be such a good clip. Oh, it's not even close. It's 4,000 kilometers away. <laughs> 4,000 kilometers away. Let me get a... I'm going to take a lark on this one. I'm going to say Mongolia. Ooh. <laughs> nope. Um, let me get a... Um, let's go crazy. Give me a Lesotho. Oh, it's 420 away from Lesotho. Blaze it. I'm just going to go insane. I'm going to say it's Madagascar. It's not Madagascar, okay? Um, give me um, a Gaborone. Did you mean Gabon? Yes, I did. Thanks so much. Okay, I didn't even know where the country was, honestly. Um, shh, give me an Eswatini. I think I just typed it in chat accidentally. Eswatini. Eswatini is warmer, even though it was warmer than... than this, okay. Um, give me a uh, Uganda then. Give me um, give me a South Africa. It's adjacent to the answer. That's a problem for me. We 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 learned these countries yesterday. I'm so embarrassed with myself that I do not remember. It's embarrassing, man. Um, uh, what about Zambia? Oh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There's all. I remember in GeoGuessr, isn't there like one? Wait, Botswana is down here. I think it's over here, though. Oh, Botswana's right. Okay, let's go. We were just a little bit above our our normal average, or I guess you can't call it a normal average, but you get it. Okay. I mean, this is a pretty tough guess, honestly. I mean, 
Turns out there's a lot of countries in Africa, and more than you'd expect in the South Pacific. I'm bad with shapes, so world will actually throws me for like even more of a loop. Every state just, every country just looks like uh, Italy to me. Case in point, like, are you not looking at this and going, like, that shit is a boot? To me, this looks like this could be North Africa, um, and this is the Mediterranean. But I literally say that every time. Could this be... Give me a second. Could this be Egypt? Oh, I was so sure. <laughs> Okay, so it's 3,000 kilometers away to the northeast. So, maybe you're looking like... That's a problem. Maybe this is like the, the Persian Gulf. This could be like... Um, uh, I'm going more Central Asia, I guess. Afghanistan. 95%. We got to go slightly to the north of Afghanistan. Here we go again. Um, could be Tajikistan. We did this yesterday, but okay, it's, it's to the northwest of Tajikistan. Could be Uzbekistan. You've correctly guessed it. I'm so glad we practiced like the Central Asia yesterday because these were like fresh on the tip of my brain. I still don't really know the, the geography of this area. I don't know the borders very well, but so far, so good. Let's, um, let's try Hurtle, which is like the hardest of all the dulls, I think, even though I watch hockey. Hey, Izzo Solaris, thank you, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Also, I did love how you completely surrounded yesterday's answer. Shiki Khan, again, my apologies yesterday for almost banning you for 600 seconds when you were completely in the right. The name, it exists still in my ledger as well. I think it made for a funny moment, but <laughs> it, it's, I was in the wrong. Okay, Hurtle. Hurtle. That's Quinn Hughes. But this time, it might actually be Quinn Hughes. This is Quinn Hughes, bro. I could tell from the hair. Quinn Hughes. Oh, no. Okay, he's in the Western Conference. He's uh, older than 23. He's not from America. He doesn't play defense. Older than 23. Let me get a Ryan Nugent Hopkins then. Oh, but he doesn't play in the Pacific. That means he plays in the Central. Okay, let me get a, um, let me get a Nathan McKinnon. He plays center. He's from Canada. Central Division is a little older. He is not from, he doesn't play for Colorado. Let me get, he, he does, oh, he doesn't play center. Sorry, he's from the central. Let me get a, um, <clears throat> older than 27 from Canada. Plays in the central. I don't know how old Max Domi is. Let's toss him out here. He's 28. Honestly thought Max Domi played for Chicago. It's my mistake, but it's still the central. We're very close to the right number here. He does play center, though. Okay, so he's maybe he's on Minnesota. A Minnesotan winger. Doesn't have to be Minnesota. It could be Winnipeg. Could be Winnipeg. Which means it could be who's who's old? Shifley is a center he's a centerman. What other teams we got there? Nashville. I'm like, could I even name like two players on Nashville right now that are not, you know, Roman Yossi and UC Soros? Pretty sure they're not from Canada. Um, just I'm crunching the St. Louis, maybe? Who's playing on St. Louis right now? Nobody good. Nobody good. Well, let's just take a guess. Let, put me on Winnipeg. I think Kyle Connor's American, but let's uh, let's try him anyway. He is American. Then they don't play for Winnipeg. Okay, my mistake. Let me get a. Um, if this is someone that's played four NHL games this year, I'm gonna lose my mind. 
Let me get a... Um... Listen, I know he doesn't even play... He's a defenseman, but at least we could figure out if this guy's on St. Louis. Okay, he's age 31. He's not on St. Louis. Could be on Minnesota. Or Nashville. Both of which are... Or, wait, there's got to be one more. I'm missing a team in my brain. I think we're going we're gonna to lose this one. Ryan Hartman on Minnesota. Ooh, he does play for Minnesota. A winger on Minnesota is 31 years old. From Canada. Honestly, I have no guess. I gotta, I, I'm defaulting to chat for this one. Marcus Foligno. You're absolutely right. It's funny how he looks nothing like Quinn Hughes, but in the silhouette... I'm like, dude, that's Quinn Hughes. Marcus Foligno. Look at that. Good guess. You got me on that one. Minnesota sends its regards. I got nothing against the Minnesota Wild, mostly because like when we were both bubble teams, I had, I had a lot of bad blood. Now that they're pretty good and we're ass, best of luck to you. It snows where you live, so your hockey team should be good. They do have a cool logo. That's also true. Let me get a guess the game. Guess the game. Hmm. Nothing immediately springs to mind. I'm going to say this is Tomb Raider 2. There's a lily pad, Metacritic score of 87. This is Metal Gear Solid 4. Guns of the Patriots. It's on the Wii U. It's Pikmin... Pikmin 3? Okay, it is Pikmin 3. <laughs> Honestly, they, you could just say it's a game on the Wii U, and then... I probably would have gotten Pikmin 3 within six guesses. I would have been like Zombie U, um, Nintendo Land. Pikmin 3 might have been like my third guess. I could have done this one just with the context clue. Breath of the Wild? That's a Switch game in my head. Give me box office game, even though it's crazy. Oh, no, dude, we're screwed. <laughs> it's, it's from 1989? 1989? I was less than one year old as of this weekend, but uh, let's, let's try at least. Some of these movies made a reasonable amount of money for 1989, so I, I'm sure I'll know them when I see them. Okay, let's start with number two because it made so much money. Give me the, the tagline. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? That is Tim Burton's Batman. Blank must face his most, most ruthless nemesis. This, he has a perfectly normal name. Why is it getting censored like uh, it hit the profanity filter in Dark Souls 1? Let me see. Okay, close this one. We at least... That, that now ties our best score ever. <laughs> How sad is that? Okay, Warner Brothers made 71 million. It's in its third week. It's really good for 1989. Stars Mel Gibson. 1989. This will be Lethal Weapon. This will be Lethal Weapon 2. Hey! Okay. We're, we're putting down a crazy score today. Now, this one. First week it came out, it made $3 million. Got crazy word of mouth. Seven exited the next weekend. Let me get a tagline. 
Can two friends sleep together and still love each other in the morning? This, why does this sound like something the TikTok voice should be saying? Actor one, Billy Crystal. Dude, this is when Harry met Sally. This was a huge weekend. When Harry met Sally, there's another 120 points in the book. Walt Disney. Six million. It's been out for five. I, this is the fucking Little Mermaid, man. That's 1989. Really? Tagline. The most astonishing, innovative backyard adventure of all time. The crazy... Th I just don't think I, I'll know an actor. Because it's probably... Oh, Rick Moranis? Never mind. Maybe it's... Little, oh, oh, it's probably... Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I didn't know that was a Disney joint. Ooh! I, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is very, very slightly before my time. But Honey, I Blew Up the Kids, which sounds bad... But is just it makes the kids really large. I think I watched that movie like a hundred times as a kid. I remember like it could probably make me cry now. I remember the little toddler getting he becomes like a giant and he's walking down the street and then he starts crying because he wants his mom. I can't watch that shit. I'll be in tears. It's probably like a two out of ten. Okay. Made $18 million. It had a, a, a reasonably large drop-off weekend to weekend. Let me get the tagline. James Bond is out on his own and out for revenge. I, don't, I couldn't tell you the 1989 James Bond, but I can take some guesses. Let's think about... This could have been um, Duran Duran, A View to a Kill. I'm going by soundtrack. Oh, I really thought that could be. Wow, this movie fucking tanked, huh? $18 million? It made $5 million its second weekend? James Bond was in the pits, man. Pierce Brosnan saved him. Um, the Man with the Golden Gun. Chat, what's the one with Grace Jones? Grace Jones is licensed to kill. It is licensed to kill. I'm going to take subtract half of my points from that last one. Is this correct? Did I at least get the that it was the one with Grace Jones? Grace Jones is a view to a kill. All right. Well, then take away all my points there. But I'll still I'll still take my uh, uh, 240. What's I'll take my 560 points though. I know I had reveals left, but, like, I already knew what was coming, you know? Like, I'm not gonna... I know it's gonna be Timothy Dalton, and then, like, the other actors and actresses in James Bond, there's, like, no shot I'm gonna get it. Like, View to a Kill guy... It's not my favorite uh, James Bond theme. It's pretty good. Isn't that the one that's like, Sit into the fire... A, a, a stolen kiss is all you miss... Something like that. I'm I'm very much um, a, a nobody does it better Carly Simon stan, even though it's an atypical James Bond theme. Okay, how about Cine to Nerdle? Also, um. Who sings You Only Live Twice? That's got the... That's a great one. That's Nancy Sinatra. That's, that's an all-time James Bond theme as well. She's not the throat goat. You're thinking of Nancy Reagan. Allegedly, allegedly. That's one of those things where I'm like, I think that we just want, somebody just wrote that 
And we all wanted that to be true about Nancy Reagan, so we never questioned the source because it, uh, it was already like was hilarious given our biases that were built in. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying we were maybe a little bit less concerned about the veracity of the information because it's funny. Anyway, have you watched The Bear yet? I have not, but thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Perhaps one day. This is Cine 2 Nerdle. Um, I see Hugh Jackman. You probably see it too, because it's on the screen. I see Midlife Crisis. I see Transylvania. Okay. Hugh Jackman, Transylvania, Hunter. There's, there's a... Um, wow, the average is so low today. There's a Van Helsing in there. Looking at some other stuff. TV game show. I'm scared. <laughs> Wait, is there like a... Um, is there a... Uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in here? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dystopian... Protagonist death? Dude, I, I'm already, I'm feeling really scared with this one. But we, we got 15 swaps. TV game show? Could, this could be like, could be a lot of things. This could be The Running Man. The Running Man? The Future? Okay. So this is The Running Man. It's dystopian as well. And then... Wes Craven. He's the Scream guy. Did he also do a nightmare on Elm Street? Perhaps um, we would have Claws and Nightmare here. And then... Nancy? I don't know. Hugh Jackman, Beauty. Maybe this is... You know, Roses is like Beauty and the Beast, maybe? Beauty and the Beast, Roses... Claws. I'm, spit, I'm just spinning my wheels here a little bit. We know we got Hugh Jackman, Transylvania. He is a hunter. I don't believe that he dies in Van Helsing. I also don't believe he's having a midlife crisis. Maybe the villain of... It makes no sense. Maybe the villain of Van Helsing is Dr. Jekyll. Okay. I have seen the movie. It was a long time ago. So this is Nightmare on Elm Street. Ro oh, you know what? Rose's protagonist, Death Beauty, is American Beauty. Spoilers, but you're not going to watch that shit. It's got uh, Kevin Spacey in it anyway. He's persona non grata. Now, let me, let me bubbly up here. This is where it gets tough. There's a couple of threads I'm looking for. One of them I don't think is going to pan out. TV game show got me thinking about Magnolia, weirdly enough. There's a lot of things that could spin off of that, but none of them are on the board. Future is obviously very... is easy enough. Beauty? Uh, like... Hunter. Claws? Hunter? Jekyll, dystopian, midlife crisis. I'm, I'm still trying to get the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen for some reason. Hugh Jackman. I'm trying to make Hugh and Nancy work for some reason. Transylvania, protagonist death. I'm kind of lost here. I wouldn't say that the protagonist dies in Dracula. Because I'm five years old, the protagonist to me is Jonathan Harkin. Harker? It's Keanu Reeves. Dracula's the bad guy. Ergo, he's the antagonist. What do you mean I got a C-plus in seventh grade English? Go ahead. Go back to your Renfield Stan Twitter accounts, okay? I'm still going to hot swap and pray. <laughs> 
It's not Nancy. The, the, the uh, love interest in Dracula is called Mina. TV game show. Unlikely. Dystopian. Pretty likely. I, I also feel... Wait, what about... Okay, hear me out. Wes Craven... Could there be a scream in here? Like a Wes Craven, Drew Barrymore runs away at the start of the movie. There's a lot of beautiful actors and actresses in it, but I guess that's true of like most movies. And then they're being hunted by um, Ghostface. I think I'm, I'm tapped. The, the, the body is unwilling. Let's try Wes Craven running. <laughs> um, protagonist death, beauty. Okay, um, five swaps. You do oh! Hugh Jackman, Claws, Future is X Men Days of Future Past. I don't know who died. Somebody must die in it. Okay, I finally got Hugh Jackman and Claws. But like, can I tell you how my brain worked? Oh, it's, it's just Logan. That makes more sense. My brain was like, it can't be Hugh Jackman and Claws. Because he's already in like one movie with Claws, which is Van Helsing. So there's no shot. This guy, he's a serious actor. There's no way he's in two movies with Claws. Then once I got past my brain just automatically saying no, I was like, never mind. He's been in like nine movies with Claws. Like, almost all of his movies are claws. Really? Dracula doesn't even have claws? There's gargoyles in Van Helsing! By the way, did we ever find out if this was true? That when Hugh Jackman... I think it was true because it was in like... Uh, well, let me put it this way. It, the, it wasn't made up unless Hugh Jackman made it up because it was a real interview. But when he got tapped to play Wolverine... He didn't know that Wolverine was not half man, half like werewolf. So when he showed up on the set, he was doing like all sorts of weird canine type movements and like howling at the moon and stuff like that. And the director was like, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, I'm like a little werewolf. And he was like, no, you're not. You're just like a guy with claws. I don't know. I heard that from you. I, I read it from a primary source. But again, we, uh, Hugh Jackman could have been making it up, as far as I know. What the hell? Movie to movie is still Warhorse versus Leon the Professional? I don't know, it's not versus, but... There was another Guess the Game that people... Uh, someone on Twitter linked me to. Oh, Chrono Photo as well. Okay, so Chrono Photo... I need to go see, guess the game, but it's a different guess the game. I got to scroll back. It is great. Like I almost get no tweets these days. So scrolling back to, to see new tweets or tweets that I'm trying to find is not hard at all. One second. I still can't find it. Wait, here it is. It's, it's Gamedal. Dot WTF. Holy cow. We got a new dull. Okay, classic. Guess the game by its cover. How to play. Every day a new video game cover is presented. Attempt to get it in the fewest guesses you can. Okay, we'll try. Let me let me just raise it a little bit here. I think I already know today's. I'm pretty sure that this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I can't spell. Or Odyssey is Greece. Holy fuck, they made a lot of Assassin's Creed, man. I think it's a Creed's man. 
It is not Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm amazing at this. People were like, he doesn't know. Never mind. Okay, how about this? Guess the game by its artwork. Okay, that's very similar to guess the game, but that's okay. Nothing, nothing against it. Now, I'll tell you, I don't know this immediately. It looks like a Sega Genesis game. No, this, looks, this is Donkey Kong Country 1. I'm crazy. All right, never mind. And then, guess the game by its specifications. Yo, this is like Hurdle, but like Hurtle, the hockey one, but with video games instead. Now we're talking. You can tell it's April from the ads, man. Um, it's Dark Souls 1. It's Dark Souls 2. Um, okay. <laughs> it came out, it's not Dark Souls 2, that's the important part. It came out a generation before, maybe, the, the PS3. It's nothing like an RPG adventure. It came out well past 2014. It, I, honestly, the rest of this is just not even in the same ballpark, okay? Yellow means same generation? No, wait, green. A oh, one or more, probably it's on PC. One or more clues is collect, correct, but not all. Okay, so take me back to the PlayStation 2 era. Um, and give me a multi-platform game on the PlayStation 2. Why am I struggling so hard to think of one? <laughs> Um, give me a, give me a Madden, oh, never mind, give me a FIFA, no, okay, never mind, give me an NBA Street, how about that, okay, didn't come out on the PC, it's not a sports game, never really thought about it, but I guess it is a third person sports game, sure, um, it's not in the NBA Street saga either, Okay, take me, move me a little bit further ahead. A PC game. You know what? Give me The Sims 2. That came out on the damn... Whoa! Oh, okay. It came out on every platform. One of these... It's an isometric... Probably simulator would be my guess. Or strategy. That came out after 2004... Let me get a StarCraft 2. Um, Wings of Liberty was the first one, right? Oh, it was on the place. It was on the, the PC. It's isometric. It's a strategy game. It came out before 2010, but after 2004. Let me get an Age of Empires 3. Oh, he's crazy. He's actually... He's got a steel trap up there. At first, I was like, there's no shot we're going to get this. Whoo! I own this on PC. I bought it to play with Malf. I think we played like one time. He probably beat my ass. And I was like, I'm never playing this shit again. I'm going back to San Andreas. I would certify this right now as a good dull. And we haven't done chrono photo yet either. Chrono photo. <laughs> is this Kyle Mooney? You make that bookmark folder yet? Nope. If I could see, I think that's a Peyton Manning jersey, 
a shirt jersey of Peyton Manning, and yet we're in uh, what appears to be the desert. I'm going to say Arizona. This must have been when Peyton Manning was at the height of his powers. I'm going to say approximately 2006. He's crazy. This uh, image has insanely cursed energy. If you asked me, I would assume that this was generated by AI. So this is George H.W. Bush, and then that's George W. Bush. This is Jeb Bush, I think. I honestly don't know who this is. Obviously, this is George H.W. Bush's wife. Why are they watching four TVs and then two of them have the exact same, they're like they're four pairs of TVs? This just doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, oh, there's a, there's a mirror? Where? I don't, I, I don't, that doesn't make, I don't think there's a mirror. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't see a, I don't see a mirror. Why would they be watching four TVs, though? Like, it just doesn't make sense. It re like I'm I know I'm going through people are like why are you talking about the same thing over and over? Well, I just can't for the life of me imagine why you'd be watching the same thing. Like you're watching two things at once twice. You're watching two things at twice. Like it doesn't add anything. This can't be, there's, there's something going on. This is the second most cursed presidential photo of all time. Next to like um, the one where Joe Biden is kneeling next to Jimmy Carter and it makes it look like Jimmy Carter and his wife are 18 inches tall. And it looks like Joe Biden is like 100 feet tall. I, this is just crazy, man. I... Uh, I mean, so George W. Bush, sorry, George H.W. Bush was elected to the presidency in 1988. I have to imagine this is pre the presidency because there used to be a little uh, decorum to the office. You probably wouldn't be taking a photo like this after you've been given the nuclear football because other countries could use it against you. To undermine your strength. So I'm going to say this is 88 proper during the campaign. <laughs> oh, baby. Okay, this is a... This is Glastonbury. This is David Guetta. I dare not look out into the stands. You never know what you're going to see at a music festival. Let me get a 2012 on this one. That hurts. That hurts a lot. This dude has had a rough weekend. You can tell. This looks like I... This is a German bachelor party, perhaps? That's what this looks like to me. Is like a, an early to mid-2000s German bachelor party. Too little beer. They're, they're smoking cigarettes inside, too. I mean, I <laughs> this is actually what my hairline was like, for real. So this, you, you might look at this guy and be like, he's like 29. I honestly think he's, he might be 19, for all I know. Um, I think this is... This looks, to me, just the lighting... I can't speak for the fashion. Plastic cutlery. I, I think this is like right when I went to college. I think this is a 06. 04. I'll take it. This has got to be 2019. We broke 4,000 today. We needed like a perfect guess on the last one and we got it. 
Other first people are like, Monka S, that guy's gonna die. Then I got a thousand people are like, Whoa, Pog! <laughs> Chrono photo is weird like that. You go through like uh, you go through the whole litany of human emotions. Okay, new movie to movie. Jason Bourne to Ad Astra. I'm telling you, this is the easiest movie to movie I've ever seen. We might be the first person to complete this one. You go Jason Bourne, and this one's automatic. You go Matt Damon, Ocean's Eleven, Brad Pitt, Ad Astra. That's a gimme. Tommy Lee Jones is also in Ad Astra. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I didn't even, I, I, as soon as I found my two-piece, I didn't even look at the one-piece. Tommy Lee Jones is in Jason Bourne? I know he's in Ad Astra. I saw it in theaters. At the end of the movie, uh, like a 15-year-old kid next to us stood up and said, Bore! And I, actually, I think he said, well, that was a waste of time. And then like four people laughed. And I was like... I wish he should. He didn't say it, but I have to say I kind of didn't disagree with him. It was... <laughs> I, I like a, a, a thinking man's science fiction movie, but Ad Astra was like a little too much for me, I think. Okay, are we, are we tapped out on dulls? Were there any classic dulls that I missed? The Run Tomatoes Daily! What was I thinking? Okay, it is a five-word beloved movie by critics and the audience alike. From 2014. Beloved. It's The Hunger Games... Catching Fire. All American entertainment. With the hero enlightened to the fact, while he may not be able to trust the American government's leaders, he ultimately represents not them, but the American ideals of truth and justice. Action Adventure. Next clue. An exciting film that expertly uses modern movie making techniques yet relatively minimal CGI to meld aspects of the this is the the, the man from Uncle. The fast paced action of current superhero flicks. I left Oh, it's Captain America the Winter Soldier. Circular discs of patriotism. Okay, okay, we got there. And the Winter Soldier is really good. If you like Marvel, you like the Winter Soldier. That's all I'm going to say. It's a good... I mean, I'm a little surprised it's 90% 90, 90 from the critics, but still. I like Civil War better. Me too. Civil War is where my Marvel fandom took off. And then I would say um, Shang-Chi is where it started to taper. But... Civil War was way worse. Not at the time, man. For me, at least. Not for maybe for you, not for me. Oh yeah, but no, Black Widow. Black Widow was where I was like, I think they kind of fucked one up. I think I paid forty dollars to watch it when it came out. <laughs> that was like in the. <laughs> that was like when COVID was like disrupting the movie industry so they didn't know what to do some sh some shit was coming out like for free on hbo max some shit was coming out like for 20 or 30 bucks american but not ever going to theaters i did not like uh black widow very much why don't you approve of female success excuse me i i thought captain marvel was okay
I didn't think it's great, but it's it's fucking it's a lot better than Black Widow. Fine, you pass. Let's go. All right, slash marker. Dull. <laughs> 